This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. This is Allison Lee Rosenfeld, the voice of Bonnie and Nurse Joy from Pokemon, Rio Castle, Riley, and Allie from Yu-Gi-Oh!, and star of Crumbly Kitchen. You're listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time Live. Welcome to the show to give you all the news, views, and opinions in the world of gaming. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extras, so let's start with your host, Xavier Josiah. Power up and game on. gentlemen welcome back this is acmg presents talk time live extra select start i am your host xavier josiah back once again i hope everybody's having a great week we're counting down to thanksgiving i uh, can't believe it's next week next week i possibly will not have a show due to that so stay tuned uh, i there may be a show on saturday uh not saturday or uh, sunday it depends. It really depends. I know the holiday, like I said, the holiday season is coming. So we're going to be breaking down a bit, taking a break. And rightfully so. I mean, I love this show, but even I have to take a break every once in a while. You know, it's not really that easy for a person to write a show, to produce a show, to do the promo for a show, <laughs> to do the graphics for the show and all that stuff. But I can use a calm down and tune up and uh, a rejuvenation, if you will. But. We are back to talk all things video games, and we got news to talk about this week. Some funny news, some upsetting news, if depending on the person. But we're going to talk about it. And as uh, Allison Lee Rosenfeld, my previous guest, has mentioned, this is Talk Time Live, and she is one of the voices of Pokemon. Nurse Joy, if you will, if you heard her, and amongst other voices on that on it was, uh, an anime. But. In honor of that, we're going to talk about Pokemon Sword and Shield, which is the much anticipated game that fans have been waiting for. It has come, but was it worth it? I, I'm just going to say off bad. It is, but I'm going to talk about why in detail. Why I think this may be one of my favorite games. This, uh, you know, my, not my favorite games this year, but my favorite Pokemon game of all time. Uh, despite some things. So... We're going to talk about that in our final stage review, but I'm not going to waste any time. We got some news to talk about here, and one of them, believe it or not, I am really excited about. I'm actually looking forward to. I had a Steam account for quite some time, and if you guys recall, if you've been listening, the only game that I've ever reviewed on the Steam was the... uh, the dating sim for the Kentucky Fried Chicken game that came out. That was the only one I did. And because the other reason why is because I know, I realized that a lot of developers, especially indie developers, port their games on the Steam before anybody. So, I mean, before they, not, not before anybody, let me rephrase that. Uh, before they actually put it onto like major console systems and such like xbox switch all that stuff they test it on the steam first so i always like to see and also there are also games that have not even made it to the consoles at all and unfortunately the irony of it is that i don't like playing on my pc for one thing it's all it's mostly for work related situations and i don't feel like sitting i already sit in my office all the time to do this show i also do that to do a lot of work that i do in here so i don't want to play games in here it's the last thing i want to do even though i do have my retro uh, pie station over where my tv is at and you know for just to play certain things in there i don't really want to game I, when i game i want to relax when i do it. and then come here to talk about what i gamed about you know so I haven't made this place, and it's not. It's mostly for studio work, mostly. So I haven't made it for that. So I'm not really a Steam person until maybe now. Because Steam, just yesterday, 
on the twentieth, just announced that they are now Im- implementing remote play, which is something that PlayStation has been doing for God knows how long for their systems and their other devices such as the PSP and the PS Vita. And as recently, they've done it for they now do it remote play for the iPad and iOS and all that stuff. So I guess Steam, rightfully so, followed up with that and made try uh, and is making their own which will allow you to uh, like PlayStation does with their remote play it was this will allow you and I guess the word remote play is not trademarked because they're using the term remote play so that's interesting to note too um they are now using their remote play to be streamed on an iOS system as well as an Android OS so that's a, a fantastic thing because I actually have been interested in wanting to play steam games so this will make myself and other people who have not invested in steam to may want to maybe you want to subscribe to their you know to their system and be able to stream the games that they download onto their onto the actual deal so i i'm all for this actually i am very much all for this i like this idea um i'm looking forward to i'm actually going to test some of it out i'm going to test i know there's some uh aca games some archive neo geo games that has not come out for the switch or the playstation 4 now i'm pretty sure xboxes have it either so i know one of them may be um king of fighters 13 which i one of my favorite king of fighters games uh to date so i would I'm, i may want to test it out there see how this whole thing works and see how it goes but i'm very much interested in this um they i believe this is past beta too for what i understand so i haven't read too much of the details but i do know that they are uh doing it now so that's awesome if you are if you own a steam account and now you have better more ways to play you can play it on your phone you can play it on your uh tablets and other places too so this is awesome and maybe and possibly maybe on a nintendo switch or maybe i don't know if playstation 4 will have allow an app to be played there but uh, you got other options. If you own a tablet or any kind or like a laptop or whatever, you now, well, you always could play it on your laptop, but now you have just more ways to play it. Um, and which means you can also probably invest in your controllers as well. So that's awesome. I actually like that news because I think the Steam is actually a good networking system for gaming. It's just that they've been limited to one aspect of gaming for those who only play on pc and now we don't have to do that anymore now they're catering to other formats and i like that i really do like that so and the other thing is too is like the games are downloadable they're not online stream at least for now i know i hope it, i hope they continue to stay that way that i can actually download data from the game into a drive or whatever like that and actually own it and not just actually rent out the game or whatnot so I like the idea. I'll see how this goes and see how that works from there. Capcom, in other news, Capcom has announced that they uh, have new a new DLC coming out, as well as a new expansion coming in 2020. Street Fighter V Champions Edition is set to arrive. Now, granted, remember, they did say that they will not be coming out with a 6 anytime soon, that they're going to prolong. I think they had the idea of doing it... Um, ongoing game format quite some for quite some time i don't know if it was before overwatch ever came out i i I have to find out but they've been talking about doing a uh and i don't know if this was based on any type of dice conference or whatever that they they had this discussion of coming up with ongoing games and just coming up with uh, consistent content or whatever but right now street fighter is the longest running fighting game to provide content you know, ongoing content and they have the most consistent um, amount of content here this new champions edition expansion is set to arrive on valentine's day 2020 depending on who you are that might be a good thing pending your your type of relationship so <laughs> this will include 40 characters over 200 costumes 34 stages and note no word on whether this DLC will be a part of the expansion or package or not. I'm assuming that this is all the costumes that we were supposed to get. Now, from what I understand, and shout out to my man Andre Stokes 
former uh, co-host of the show. Um, he posted this first, but he says that they, they, the, there is a price for it, and it's twenty four ninety nine, which is not bad for anybody who actually, you know, uh, owns the game per se. And if you really do the math, that amount of content is way, way, way more than twenty four ninety nine. So twenty four ninety nine is a bargain compared to what they were charging prior to so that's one of the deals right I, you know what's funny you know what's really funny and i know this won't happen and mortal Kombat does this too nether realm studios uh does this too i'm wondering they do this situation where they come out with all this dlc people buy into this dlc some people buy all the dlc and then later on they come out with these expansion packs these bundles that gives you everything for a small fee for a smaller price how many people are going to start realizing start using critical thinking which is something i might be using a lot on this episode or saying a lot in this episode and if you don't know what critical thinking is you damn sure better look it up online and use it as a tool to make right decisions believe it or not some people just don't act don't I haven't been going to college and that term has not been used outside of it except for those who actually attend it but they they I mean I wonder how many people will actually figure it out use critical thinking think a bit think for a minute like wait they've done this before and they've done this and this so why should I buy in early and just wait it out until they lower the prices down because I've technically I wouldn't say I technically do it because I've still for the um for another realm, I don't do it, but they wind up doing the XL series and all that stuff later on, and I know it's coming. Uh, which is like for those, it's mostly for those who have not actually, uh, you know, paid to play this game before, like Street Fighter, which I'm assuming almost everybody has by now. And it's for those people. It's mostly for those people, but honestly, it's like. You want the game now, and you want everything now, but sometimes is it worth getting all of it now? Because if you look back and on the money that you spent on all of which you spent, you spent a ton of money. You spent a ton of money while somebody just walks in and pays twenty four ninety nine for it. You may want to think about that. Getting the core game is one thing, and maybe certain other aspects of it is one thing. But I don't think you should get everything all at once. It depends on the situation. So you got to play it by air. You got to. Like I said, use critical thinking towards your buying uh, decisions and, you know, just think about it that way. But um, the other big news that came out of this was the announcement, finally, and I mean finally, because he's actually appeared in the end of the story mode, Gil finally makes his appearance in the world of Street Fighter uh, 5, which is a prelude to Street Fighter uh, 3. I know they did the Quentin Tarantino timeline thing with this, but this is Street Fighter V is in fact the prelude to Street Fighter Three. So it was only right that he finally comes in, makes his appearance, and this is supposed to transition right over to the old school 2D game from there. So that's how they did it. The cool thing I want to note that I love about this new uh, addition to the uh, series. Uh, I, first of all, Gil is just Gil on Street Fighter Three. For anybody who's actually played, I had the opportunity to beat him many a times. But I'm, I'm telling you, he was—he's never easy to beat. He's never easy to beat. You really got to know his pattern, and if you mess up even on a smidge of that pattern, he's gonna get you. He's gonna rock you hard. So you cannot let up on him. But. The thing I love about this one here is that the extra skins that you get, one of them is like sort of a, uh, I guess a Roman centurion type of, you know, get up that he's wearing. But also the third one is Pyron. He's wearing a Pyron skin. I am so loving that Pyron, which honestly is kind of a trolling tease to those who want a fresh brand new Darkstalkers game. And unfortunately from what we understand dog stalkers is it is a possibility at best that dog stalkers can come out can come back out as far as the rest of the games that we want like rival schools project justice uh i just spoke about this with um 
one of our ACMG uh, members, Brennan, last just last night, and we were talking about this, and he had reason to believe that the rumor for a lot of these games to come out was for as like rumor for some reason. In fact, I know that that's not the case because in our in the Art of Street Fighter panel that I hosted uh, at Keystone Comic Con this year with um, the Udon crew, Longvo and uh, and Champa, shout out to them, um, that they revealed that a lot of reasons why these games aren't coming out is due to poor sales. Now, much as much as they are literally a cult. They are a cult favorite amongst myself and a whole bunch of other people. They don't make that many sales for them to produce and make that much money. And it, it kind of makes sense. Sadly, it makes sense. Now, what I would say, like they did with, um, and I, I, God, I hope Unimusha. I really hope Unimusha 2 and 3 comes out on the Switch. I Especially 3. I, I desperately want to play that game again. I haven't played that game in forever. Um, I really enjoy what the the new version of Unimusha, the remake version. Uh, so hopefully they'll come out with those two. They came out with, uh, I believe, all three Devil May Cry games so far. So hopefully Unimusha will be a set thing, and that will lead them to come out with that. But yeah, I mean it, it's 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 here or there where a drag a dog stalkers game will come out but it's it's i think that game has more possibility of coming out due to the fact that they came out with so many different versions of that game and that so many versions of the game has sold so i'm i'm really hoping to see that come out so we'll see we'll see uh and speaking of another realm <laughs> they also released a video uh showing sindel who will be the final character of the mortal kombat 11 universe of 2019 this is the final dlc to come out for new uh, for 2019 she looks great i have no quarrels about it uh, i just not exactly as excited as most people are have been clamoring for this character because i knew and wanted spawn to come out and unfortunately he is coming out in 2020 along with joker joker's coming out january 28th 2020 while spawn is coming out in march of 2020 I seriously, I'm so still upset about that. But hopefully, with Spawn coming out uh, coming out last, that also will announce possibly the long-awaited announcement uh, of the movie that Todd McFarlane talked about way back in San Diego Comic Con at 2017. He did a panel. If you, I don't know if you guys remember. He did a panel. I actually still have the audio for that, too. Um, he did a panel way back in 2017. Uh, him with Robert Kirkman, uh, who is the creator of... Uh, they're both Image uh, image staff, I guess. They're, from, they're both belong to Image Comics. So they did a panel together. And tr- God, I got to tell you, that panel was so entertaining. Those two are hilarious. I mean, absolutely hilarious together. It was more of a comedy bit watching them two talk about what they've done in the industry and, and how Robert came into uh, Image and everything. It was really cool. It was really cool. They both hosted it themselves. They had no moderators whatsoever. And um, it was hilarious. I really enjoyed what they did in there. But they, you know, Todd did announce that a Spawn movie is in the works. It's 2017. It was 2017. We're now going into 2020. So hopefully. We'll finally get that announcement coming soon. It, it's a long time coming. It's about that time for an announcement to come for that. So we'll see. Uh, two more bits of news here that I'm going to talk about before we break for our uh, final stage review. And uh, that is the Game Awards. The 2019 Game Awards is coming. And I am always excited about the Game Awards. And they've always made a really good deal. Jeffrey has done a tremendous job at putting together these Game Awards, making it a major thing. And it looks like it's become, going to be bigger than ever this year. Uh, the nominations are out right now. You can go to the official website at thegameawards.com and cast your vote for the categories mentioned. Now, I don't know if our votes really count for real because the the true judges and the true voters of this uh of the uh game awards are mostly major media and uh that is like believe it or not entertainment weekly um 
For what is it? For I think Forbes is in here too. Um, there's a lot. I mean, the the list of new uh, major groups have uh, grown since because a lot of a lot of coverage from games have grown since then, and and from Forbes is even covering uh, video games now. Um, Entertainment Weekly has always covered it. Uh, IGN has always covered it. You know, GameSpot, you know, stuff like that. GameStop has covered it as well. So you got exact, you got people within that realm to give votes as well to that. So that's interesting uh, indeed. So I don't know if how much our account, if it's more or less just our ability to just give our mentions of who we believe, our predictions or whatever, but um, that plays a factor. I will run those down uh the next time i do the select star show which again may not be next week it may be the week after which is great because it'll lead in to that awards show and it's coming out december 12th so it uh, let me see let me see i think that'll play in just well uh for me next week yeah because all right so yeah uh the first week of december is probably when i do another show for select start uh, after i take a break for the holiday and then I can run down what's going down. That'll probably be an all episode. I don't know if I'll just do news in that, but I'll have an entire episode for that uh, as well. So uh, dedicated to that, two episodes dedicated to the game wars. One uh, where it talks about the uh, the predict my predictions on it, and the other one that will cover the rundown of what happened up there. So stay tuned for that. That I've always do that. I do that every year. Maybe I'll have a guest on air i don't know maybe maybe not i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes i say this last bit of news because this is hilarious in this in some cases for me because let's go way back to e3 e3 one of the big all right one of the talked up what i want to say the most talked about news what are the most intriguing news that came out of e3 was in fact that Google was putting their name in the hat of the gaming industry by way of a new street online streaming system and network called Stadia. Uh, Stadia. I looked at this thing and how they how they were putting this together. And after what I looked at this, I had a lot more questions that I had excitement for this system. For instance, how much is it going to cost? Why is there a pre-order system and we don't see how this thing worked? They never really showed. They showed a, like, sort of a uh, CGI conception of how this is going to work, but we didn't see any hardware during that demonstration, which I believe, if I'm correct, I, I don't recall, but wasn't it a... No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't think it... I think it was a video presentation followed by... No, it, it might have been just a video presentation. That, I think, made it worse. There was no hardware demonstration, demo, live hardware demo of this game system. There was promises of this is what they're providing, this is what they're going to do. There, It came with a controller. It came with a Google Chrome, some of which I know people already owned. So you're getting another one because you had to pre-order this bundle. Then that's not including the fact that you had a yearly subscription that you had to pay for as well. Now, upon getting this yearly subscription, you also go into this system and you play a lot of games and then you play other games owned by other gaming networks. Here's the problem. Once you get into this gaming network that you already paid a yearly subscription of, you have people like Ubisoft and other, you know, uh, developers that have their own internal subscription network within uh, Stadia. So not only are you going to be paying for this system and this network and this subscription, you're going to be paying for more subscriptions within this. Where in the hell is this anyway a good investment in your money? You have to be an utter idiot to invest in something that one you did not see you did not see work from day one and two (laughs) they didn't they're making you pay much more once you get in it how much of a pretentious idiot does somebody have to be and i swear to goodness i'm not joking i looked online when they announced this 
There were people already jumping the gun, getting this, acting like they were doing something really big. They were being big shot. They were hot shit and trying to get into this game system. I'm like, no, why are you doing this? You don't see the hardware work. There's, and the fact that this is online reliant, you really have to see this thing work. This is not an offline console system like the Nintendo Switch. They, the Nintendo Switch, when they premiered that, they displayed it. They showed it working. They made it happen. They convinced people that this was a worthy investment to get in. You get this system and they don't even show you that this thing works on a live demonstration. Are you freaking kidding me? I have no sympathy for what I'm about to read right now. I have no remorse or no sympathy about what I'm going to say and how I feel because I knew this was coming. So in a, I knew this was going to happen news segment. IGN.com reports that gamers who invested in Google's new attempt to enter the game industry known as the Stadia is upset, upset about the announcement of a widespread delay in providing pre-order access codes, which now has some of their biggest supporters turning against them. Big surprise there. Gamers who invested in the on, on the new online streaming network complained that they did not receive their codes or the hardware, which was I, which I mentioned was the controller and the Chrome device that they were uh, not supposed to get. Which in the Chrome device, the the one the Pro that gives you the 4K abilities, which I actually own already. So it's like, why do I need to get another one? That's like a waste of money for me. I just get I just need the controller at best. Pending that I actually ordered. A certain number of gamers were promised to acquire a display name for a certain version of this, uh, which was seen, which will be seen on your gaming platform. It's for, I guess it's for the developer's edition or something like that. Um, This lore tactic has now fallen under the waist of those who have been waiting to receive the incentive to pre-ordering the system and subscription. There is now a petition for those who pre-ordered the system that demands a found the founder's edition is what it's called by the way uh the founder's edition purchasers or investors to get a full refund for their failed promises now all right although i have no sympathy or empathy for any of these people because they just they what they did what these people did is to say they make the same mistake that those folks who went to the fire festival did. This is the gaming version of the fire fest. This is truly that's exactly what this is. Um, I I'm sorry I I don't because any person with a brain, and I'm sorry I gotta I gotta be I gotta be gritty and raw with this. Any person with a brain would have thought about this first, like, wait, this is a demonstration of what they're doing. Okay. They want us to invest in something we haven't seen demonstrated live. I can't buy into this. It's all online base and not everything online base. Ooh, excuse me. Forgive me. Uh, not everything online base works fluidly. There's always bandwidth issues. There's always server issues. And when it comes to gaming, especially not, not as much as video, you know, for like, for like, let's say Netflix and Disney plus and all that stuff, not as much as that, more or less gaming plays a whole new different factor in that type of situation. If you have a bad bandwidth, that's not a good investment for you. If you don't have a strong bandwidth for stuff like that, which at this point we all should in this case, but you never know. So not everybody can afford it to have a hundred and something MBPs or whatever. You know, not everybody has that ability to have bandwidth, but if you buy it, you're stupid for actually doing it. I'm sorry. Um, but also it's like, it's online. It's just never, I'm never a big fan of online gaming. Totally. There's always a lag issue. There's always something going on. It's never, it's, we're not at the stage where I feel confident and we should feel confident at the stage. That's the thing. We should feel confident about the stage. But at this stage, 
we're not ready to go there yet. We're not. And I, I, I and did even still the, 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 the business package structure is crazy. You're paying so much money. And I did the math way back then when they, when we did the E3, uh, you know, follow up for this. It, 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 no, you're paying, you're going to be paying a fortune for games that you could play on a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox and a Nintendo Switch and not pay a monthly fee. That to me is ridiculous. So I'm sorry, man. I, I, I don't, I don't feel sorry. I'm sorry, but I don't feel sorry for anybody who stupidly invested in something you didn't see the product work. You got fire fested <laughs> or fire infested for that matter. So uh, I, I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen from this point. But I, I Google, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how the stocks have gone with Google right now because of that situation. Stocks. I'm sure has probably fallen whenever they do whenever they try to venture outside of their realm which is online I mean the nest all the, the Google uh, nest and all that stuff and the Google home and all this stuff that stuff works that's I give them credit for that those items work but trying to do you know have like their own mobile devices like the Google uh what is that the Google Glass which I I I don't understand if I'm toy animation I would have sued the hell out of them that is a Dragon Ball Scouter come to life <laughs> I don't care what the hell they say and they made it expensive as hell they they did the Neo Geo thing and made it uberly expensive so like nobody was going to invest in that no way hell plus it just caught just the whole liability issues with that thing you could easily get into a, a, a bad situation on in traffic with that so no no to that um you also now and now they try to get it to this and i think it, i i just saw it as a very well failed experiment and in fact that will officially now i said it was going to get the uh, microsoft zune award for this and i think they will be, it's in heavy nomination to win the zune award for this year <laughs> and if y'all don't know what the zune award is to me if you guys remember Maybe some of you don't, and that's understandable. Zune is the failed attempt of trying to compete with the i with the iPod at the time. It was a it was their you know portable you know MP3 player for music and such that tried to compete with uh, with the Apple iPad uh, iPod and now later on the iPhone, and it failed miserably. I remember a an old friend of mine was so adamant that this thing was going to be the hottest thing ever i even laughed even harder because they used it as a gag on guardians of the galaxy 2 so i was i was so i was so it, it was hilarious for me that whenever something i see that i don't think is gonna possibly make it out there and i knew it isn't it gets the zoom award it gets the zoom award for me for that one so there it is people that's it is what it is. We'll follow up on this definitely and see what happens with this because I, I I knew this was gonna happen. So I I think it's just a bad investment. Uh, it's a really bad gaming investment. So if you're listening to this, if you did purchase, it, hey, sorry for you. I'm sorry. I hate, I hate. Here's the thing: just because you made a bad mistake doesn't mean it dooms you for life. It doesn't doom you for life for making a mistake everybody makes mistakes just some things you can you can absolutely avoid if you make the right decisions if you if again if you use critical thinking if you critical thinking allows you to think thoroughly about the situation before you make a valid investment or decision so i mean make the mistake just learn from it laugh it off that's all I could. That's the best constructive criticism I could tell you, and learn your lesson from it, because never, you should never invest in something you don't see it working. There's no proof of it. That's why I I I can tell you a mistake I made. Definitely tell you a mistake I made. Working with people who have not had a merit of experience to make to do what is need to be done. That's my biggest mistake. 
that is one of my biggest mistakes right there. Uh, and and in turn, it, you know, I I've I've brought people along for things that didn't really have any experience in doing things, but I just wanted to give them opportunity, and they took it for granted. And I don't regret it, but I learned from it. You know, it was a mistake that was made. Um, I've recovered from it, obviously, but it's a mistake I made. This is kind of the same realm as the Stadia situation. It's like, you cannot, without seeing it in, in, in action and in motion, don't invest in it. Don't invest in any of that. And regardless of how beautiful the graphics look and the advertisements and the promotion and all this stuff, as a, as a multimedia developer, as a person who works with people you have to see the product i tell my clients all the time like you got to be legit in what you do you can i can design the look that you need to attract your target audience all you want but you damn sure have got to back it up you got to have the product that people believe in and not feel like that they're being suckered into i hate i i do i refuse to work with people like that if i find out if i work for google and i found out they had this situation they needed it and I saw what this is. I kind of don't want to, to really invest in a company, regardless of it being Google. I don't want to invest in a company and be linked to a failed situation. We don't, we, honestly, the idea is that you never know. You never really know at the end of the day. Sometimes you feel like it does, but then you find out later on that things went belly up for them because they made bad decisions. But. For the most part, you can avoid certain things. There are certain things you can avoid. And again, if you come to a situation where it doesn't work out, find out why it didn't work out and utilize that the next time around to not go through that again. That's the most positive thing I can tell you about this situation. So let's leave it off that. Folks, that will do it for this portion of uh, Select Start. We're going to take a break, come back, and we're going to give my final stage review of Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's finally here. How good is it? We'll find out right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dak Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langdon, the voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go. Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on Talk Time Live. Live.com. TalkTomLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTomLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live! We are back with our final stage review, and it is my review, my personal review, of Pokemon Sword and Shield, the much-anticipated follow-up to, in sequel, to Sun and Moon, and we finally get our hands on this game. This is the official follow-up. I mean, if you guys recall, you know, Pokemon came out, uh, Game Freak came out with a Pokemon game, very, sort of kind of different from what they were doing, but it was paying tribute. To the uh, past uh, but this latest edition of the Pokemon series finally returned in the form of Sword and Shield now while let's go Pikachu and Eevee was kind of a love letter in a 3d remaster of the original uh, red and blue game from the Game Boy Sword and Shield marks the switch's official follow-up of that so this time around we head to the Galar region where the uh, your character that you create 
uh, once again sets out on a journey to become yet again the Pokemon champion or Pokemon League champion of the world. Although the story and gameplay may be formulaic, there is a lot of new bells and whistles within the game that uh, to give it a new car smell or should I say a new game smell, if you will. Uh, game Freak, much like Nintendo does, doesn't really, they don't really, they don't reinvent the wheel. They reinforce it in this case. So, I mean, to use the term re- reinvent the wheel, no, it's not. Because what they use, they reinforce the wheel. The wheel is already made. And they just add more in to make it as good but stronger. Still keeping in all the fundamental things that made it so good. Uh, so, this is what they did here. And it, it, it does, in fact, maintain its strength and depth within the game as well. If anybody was disappointed, as I was with Game Freak's latest, newest game that in the first game that they came out in years since pokemon came out was uh which was my little town hero you can relax you will not be disappointed like you were with that game uh as this not only is another great pokemon game in my opinion but also possibly the best in the game's long run of history if if anything if all else my personal favorite at best and we're going to talk about that so let's talk about the story of this game here uh the story for me this time around stuck out just a little more than the previous uh stories as i mentioned before it's the story is cookie cutter to what you know and from the anime from the game from the cards whatever from the movie if you, well no, no actually detective pikachu did go into a different uh storyline so had nothing had really nothing to do with actually uh him being a Pokemon League champion. So I think that's one of the biggest things why I love that movie so much too. Uh, just It didn't have the same story, but it had the same formulaic elements in there though that made Pokemon what it was. So that I did like. So, But they just changed the storyline dramatically in that sense. But I digress. Uh, they went into a lot this time. Um, I think what made this different why I like this storyline so much is the, is more or less... The difference uh, this time for me would probably comes in the form of the strongly diverse group of characters that came in this time around. Uh, the Game Freak this time created more characters than any more. Let me let me rephrase that. They made they created more diverse characters than any Pokemon game before that represents people of color and possibly orientation as well uh, and and pertains to one character uh, which makes this game experience way more engaging uh, to those who felt that the game characters in previous games did not represent them or they feel like they couldn't truly be a part of the game this time you absolutely can uh, your character and hop who is the rival character that you have this time around uh, not only tries to become the Pokemon League champion, but also tries to uncover a mystery of two legendary Pokemon that has lived long ago. So the story has everything you would expect from uh, from a Pokemon game, including its own Team Rocket-like gang known as Team Yell, led by their leader and pop idol, uh, and Pokemon, as well as Pokemon trainer uh, Marnie. So, I mean, but the thing that, here's the difference between that. Uh, I do want to note that Team Yell isn't exactly like Team Rocket in a sense or any other evil organization. They're not really that much of an evil organization. They're just like a street gang at this point. And a lot of times you'll find them working with your character in Hop from time to time. So I like that aspect. I like that they didn't do the cliche, all right, we're going against this big evil gang or conglomerate or organization this time around. That wasn't, the, they they weren't the antagonist of this one, the, or at least the main antagonist of this one. Uh, so that I did like about the story. While while I am accustomed to the story, I, will, I still find it uh, just, as bit as entertaining as I always did with any other ones, um, and a not least bit bored even though I heard this story many, many times before. So they managed to just restructure it just a little bit, changing some things around, but keeping that core story element and, and structure with it. And I, and I dug that. I, just like they did with Pokemon uh, Detective Pikachu. Same, same core elements, but kind of, you know, mixed it around and changed it just a bit from there. So, uh, and once you beat the game, 
There is yet another lengthy prologue story that involves two new uh, enemies that you'll be facing as well. And then after that, there's even more stuff to do, too. You still got Pokemon to collect and all the stuff. So that the replay value for this game has even jumped even further. Now, I know even for I know, you know, X and Y, if I recall, had an aftermath thing, but it wasn't like really that strongly story based. Uh, nor was Sun and Moon, if I remember correctly. I've played and beat both of those games. The, the, Pokemon is the only RPG game I absolutely enjoy, just to how the structure of the uh, battle system works. Um, it, it, I, you can never say I don't like turn-based games. I don't like all turn-based games, but I will absolutely play Pokemon. This is one of the ex, uh, exemptions to that as well. I don't know why, but it is. It's just how on Game Freak does it. And how they put it together, it's really, I just like the way they do it. Uh, for this, not for my little town hero. <laughs> we'll stress that. I doubt, I nearly wanted to throw things after playing that game. I was so relieved when I played this, that this was not anywhere near that. And they didn't change a thing in there. And let's talk about gameplay. Let's segue right into that. Gameplay, if you played any Pokemon game, this is no different. You play a turn-based rock, paper, scissors battle system, which allows you to strategize and gain the advantage over your opponent if you strategize properly. However, the big gimmick this time around involves a new strange phenomenon called Dynamaxing. I don't know why they call it that. It's such a really crazy... It, 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 yeah. it, it's, they could have. I feel like they could have thought of a better word than Dynamaxing. It's just, it's hard to roll off your tongue when you say it. Uh, but it, it kind of plays off of some of the negatives that I have for the game, too, which is not much, but we'll talk about that soon enough. Uh, Dynamaxing, Dynamaxing is, will have a normal Pokemon grow into a giant, which can cause major damage in the battlefield in so much of an epic way. Um, you can only activate it one, uh, by while completing the an official pokemon league competition or during a raid battle so there you can't do it just anytime you want if you're in a wild field if you're in a wild uh, area you can't do it there it only has to be within a pokemon stadium uh area where i guess the safety of people that's in a uh, stadium full of people and all explosions are happening i don't know why that's the safe place but it's it, it, why that's a safe environment but um only pokemon stadiums can do it and only in, when you in raid areas as well so the dynamaxing aspect of the uh, battle system uh much like the z moves in sun and moon adds yet another fun factor to the gameplay as you can only use it one time during battle once you use it you have three time three uh, moves to use it in and once you use it that's it so you have to strategize and use it sparingly and because if you use it if you use it too early you risk being defeated so you you have to strategize for it. And I love that aspect of it. Because if you really do it at the right time, your your Pokemon in that form can cause a lot of damage and allow you to get gain a major advantage in winning. So thankfully, the game now tells you whether your Pokemon moves, uh, your move set is effective enough to defeat an uh, opponent. If you, it does also, it does not mean that you have a complete edge on, uh, on the actual match that you're having as you may be stumped when you discover that your pokemon that you chosen isn't enough to defeat the opponent that's on the field right now which means that you'll have to change you possibly have to change pokemon during battle and if you played any pokemon game before that also means that you're losing the opportunity and advantage that you may have during that turn which can turn a whole entire game against you and you climb trying to climb back up to defeat so and i've the, the lovely part about the, the battle system to this, they're, they're very user-friendly and understandable battle system and compare it to their my little town hero, is that it creates a balance. That algorithm creates a balance that allows you to not win all the time. You have to strategize. You have to do, you know, you got to be, it, it allows you to think clearly and concise with what you need to do. Nonetheless, the gameplay is as solid as ever, and the addition of the Dynamaxing uh, now, uh, system now creates a more epic experience. And I love the presentation, which we will talk more on that for sure and definitely. Um, 
new to the series also is the addition of a fully explorable open world with, that will remind you of uh, remind most Switch owners of experiences like Zelda Breath of the Wild. So now you can pan your camera freely to view vast amounts of land and seek all those lands to pursue new wild Pokemon that you could gather in uh, in the fields. And a lovely part about it too is that you can see Pokemon in those fields all the time. You can also sneak up on them. You can do all sorts of really cool things. You can stealthily move up against them. They, If you go too fast in the field, they'll see you and try to come at you and try to, you know, attack you per se. Uh, and it, it, I, I love what they did this time. It really gives... Each Pokemon game gives you more of an experience and emerges you into that world. This, I think, has done more than every other one, every one of the versions prior to. And I think a lot of that has to do with the power of the Switch in general. So I, I absolutely enjoyed it. The purpose of this is to find, uh, to find and, you know, rare and wild Pokemon in the fields as well as battle uh you can do raid battles with in which uh you can team up alongside people online so which i've done a few i actually enjoy those as well and once you do it you actually get if you defeat the character or whoever defeats the the pokemon the, the dynamics pokemon in the raid everybody gets everybody gets the same incentives and I like this is part of the this is again part of the structure the the Nintendo structure that I love, which is a little bit Disney esque to me, and that's not a, I'm saying that as a good thing, is how that they create games for you to just have fun. You could be challenged too, but the most important thing is that you have a overall enjoyment that you and you yourself as an individual gamer or you as a family enjoy together. So that I absolutely enjoy from that there. Um, the open world also allows you to camp out with your poker squad as you uh, take time to play in the f- uh, play with them and feed them as well. Uh, they have a recipe system now, which is like a little mini game system. You find, while you're in a wild fields or whatever like that in a wild area, you come across trees that have berries or whatnot, and you create what they call a curry cooking system. So. You go to during while you're also going into you know certain region areas. You can also go to stores and buy certain products that you could create to make food for them. And you just come up and create these new different recipes or whatever, whatnot. Um, you can also team up and you know do a full team up. There's also campsites that you find out there. You could join with them and create recipes with that person out in the field as well. So there's so many cool ways of doing things in, in here. So many, so much things to do to keep you, um, in, you know, into the game uh, atmosphere and world and experience in this thing. I, and it's so much fun. I, I've had so much fun playing this game. Um, the open world not only has you fighting and capturing Pokemon, but also against weather climate as well. That is a really interesting factor to this game. Um Weather conditions will play a fact. It'll it'll affect harm, or have some sort of different effect while you while uh, creating a handicap in battle. So there are times when it snows. If it snows, that plays a factor in your battles. If it hails, it definitely plays a factor in your battles because you could get hit while during in battle. You could actually get hit by hailstones, and that depletes a bit of your uh, HP to both not only you but your opponent as well. So they play that factor as well in the fields and in the Pokemon stadiums as well. Sometimes if you're if you go in Dynamax form and you're a giant and they do like a freeze move, the whole entire field starts to snow or starts to hail. Or if you use a water, if you use like a, a, a giant water move uh, that creates an impact in the field, that also creates like hail. Uh, I know if they if a sand move or a move involving the ground moves or whatever come in that creates a storm a sandstorm and the same storms can hurt you as well so i i really really love that aspect that new weather climate aspect because it even makes the intensity of the match even more engaging and you really have to find ways to beat your opponent before you deplete any energy or find a way to do a move so big that it stops the weather climate from happening because you can do that as well so uh 
Hellstorms and Sandstorms provide you a really good challenge from there, and I really enjoy that aspect. Um, as far as the presentation goes, whether you experience the open world for wild Pokemon searching or battling arenas, uh, you know, for an official battle against an opponent, Pokemon Sword and Shield really provides more of what fans loved about this about this game series, while giving you a lot more of depth to the game con uh, continuity. And that's what I said. It's like they're not really reinforcing. I mean, reinventing the wheel. This is them reinforcing it. Same wheel, just making it stronger. Add in a little bit more alloy to it, a little bit more intensity and strength to it. I especially love the arenas, which to me is some of the best. I mean, I've known they, they've done some great jobs with these Pokemon stadiums before, but this one, because it's the, again, because it's the Switch, they're able to do a lot more, and now we have these stadiums that look, it really gives you a sportsman-like feel with these jam-packed crowds just coming to see you um, play in the field, and it gives you that real fight feel. You know, like you're really going into a sporting event. And I love the way they did. Now the the um the your characters now have to wear official Pokemon Stadium gear, like jerseys and everything. Like you're like you're in a sport, like you're playing soccer or football or even esports for that matter. So I, I really like the presentation that they put on for this aspect as well. I also wanna point out that um how elaborate the gym challenges are now because once you go into a stadium you don't just go straight into the stadium you actually have to go and to a actual stadium challenge and each challenge has a different and just i and i'm if i'm correct sun and moon did it too and uh, i think why is the ynx did it as well i mean all of them did it but not to this extent i love the way that they did it because they were able to do so much more with these uh stadium challenges now uh and just creating a challenge because the idea is to try to stay strong until you reach up to the Pokemon leader. And this time around, I, I felt that like the way they designed each one of these were so much better than than previous ones that I played before. So, and the puzzles and obstacles are really fun and really great. There is one that was one that was really tricky for me, but I eventually got through it uh, and figured it out. But all of them are really there's there's so much fun. So, and the best. Oh, if any strategy to go with Pokemon, just make sure that they're highly leveled up by the time they reach, you know, by the time you reach any of these stages before, because uh, otherwise that will pose a problem. If you're not at the, at anywhere near uh, at the level or above the level, it's best to be above the level. It, you'll find it to be a little bit more challenging than you want it to be. So while previous games tried to bring a change in the gameplay experience, but felt limited in its attempt, yet these added features thanks to the power to switch to me, uh, gives it it uh, gives it the impact these stages needed to make it even uh, more, as f more fun than ever, in my opinion. I also want to note that both games actually provide enough contrasting content that I feel, for the first time ever, it's worth buying both games. Um, if I understand, I, I actually got Pokemon Sword, and in fact, Pokemon Shield has not only different, a couple different stadiums that is not on the on the Sword version, but some other uh, gym leaders as well. So it does give you a reason to want to do it. Plus, there's some other Pokemon that are not in the game, in the other game. So if you enjoy the first game, you may actually will enjoy the second game because they give you a little bit different, somewhat of a different experience, and especially after the prologue game. There's going to be a different outcome from that based upon what you get from there. So it I, for the first time, I normally don't suggest getting these bundles because I don't feel they give enough. At the time, it was just like you get a few new Pokemon and then you get one legendary Pokemon that's not in the other game. But everything else is the same experience. I at least give them credit. I think this may be worth getting because the amount of content that you're getting from each game is far different and, and meaty enough i can say to you know want to get uh and invest in both so kudos to them on that when they finally got it together they finally finally got it together um but one of the biggest things and lastly the biggest thing that i think that they got together which i really enjoyed and i mentioned it before is the presentational aspect that game freak finally got right the char their character creator in the past 
was good, but it lacked total representation. And I say that when I say that, um, I'll give an example. When you create, when you wanted to create a male character or a female character of color, or mostly, let me know, just go to the male character of color. When you want to create a male character of color, for example, they give you a pigment tone. They give you the right pigment tones, yet it lacked the appropriate hairstyle selections or whatever that makes you really feel like that this kid is really like a, in their version of a, there's no such thing as Africa in the Pokemon universe, but let's just say a, per, a, a black character, a believable looking black character. Cause you always had to, the hairstyles were never there. The, um, they, they always had a kid who was a darker tone, but you had hairstyles of a Caucasian. And in some cases, you could just write off and say, like, this person is of Indian descent, you know, or East Indian descent, for that matter. Um, but you can never say, claim that it was like an African character. But now they finally got it right. They finally got, you know, short haircuts. They got, you know, cornrows. I, cornrows is such a go-to thing. Uh, I was hoping they would have some, like, you know, locks or something like that, like dreadlocks or something like that, but they don't have it. I guess the, uh, I guess the corn roll, you know, lock thing can possibly be that. And it looks cool, but I love the short haircut style. It's just simple. It's easy. And they can go with it. I think if they wanted to, they could easily add more if they wanted to, but they went with that. And that to me was satisfying enough. And he looks like a character that other african-american characters or or african characters or uh people of color can relate to that can feel like all right we're being represented in this game like we could be the main character in this game that i feel like that was a major deal to me and it actually it made the game much more enjoyable as that um this time around also the clothing stock has upped either they mentioned this they mentioned a lot of this they have a lot of great uh, clothing selections now that you can buy and collect. Not only that, you can also buy uh, official gym gear from the stadiums that you uh, that you go to, and you can buy them. And then you also, upon w uh, beating a gym leader, you will receive their gym, their official gym uh, gear and jersey and, and and gear that they have, uh, which is which you absolutely can wear. I remember I watched, I read online that people thought that you couldn't wear it. No, you can. Uh, you can wear it. You can't wear it while. Uh, by uh while actually fighting in the stadiums against the gym leaders but you can wear it on the street you can wear it while battling other pokemon all you got to do is go into the clothing store go into the clothing uh room and change to any uh any clothing that you own or want from there so that's that um that i mean that just all of that i really it just makes this so much more enjoyable for the there the only negative i can really say and i mentioned this about dynamics you know name and i said that because i felt like you know calling it dynamaxing is just like it's just like you're doing too much just simplify it just make it something what it is well i also felt like that too when it comes to the pokemon designs my only negative is the pokemon designs while some are good there are others that i was like i feel like they just couldn't think of anything else to do or design and they just came up with anything at this point <laughs> you know i was one of the only folks that felt like the original 101 pokemon were more than enough to do as far as they've if they ever want to do sequels and it made sense because i don't think that even i don't know how many actual species we have on this earth right now but i have reason to believe that we don't have that many as they have in the pokemon universe i don't know per se if the pokemon universe from red and blue on to sword and shield are all connected together i don't know if it's like final fantasy whether it's a whole new world in a sense i'm i'm hoping that it is because that will answer a lot of that will make a lot more sense than all of these pokemon are in the same planet and i'm like how much habitat do they have for these animals to be able to be uh to live in this like the, the i felt like i feel like the the pokemon should be taking over the world by now as many as they have right now so that was my deal but with each design you have some hits or, or misses for example I love the score bunny Pokemon with that you first pick up because that's the one I chose. He was really cute. I loved him. Kind of had the the uh, the Pikachu type of feel to it. But 
I hated the, the evolved design that he came afterwards. Like, it, 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 I, I wasn't a fan of it. It didn't, like, he came from this really cute design and it's like, ugh. <laughs> like, his growing spurt just doesn't look right. Um, I, I didn't like the design at all. I know that there were some, it was said that there were some inspirations that drew from English mythology, but to me, some of the designs just looked, it felt lazy. It felt really lazy to me. Like, they just didn't, they, they've been doing this for years and they're just trying to come up with new, different, fresh concepts. I think they worn themselves out at this point with some of them. Uh, one of the Pokemon they designed is literally a set of gears levitating around you. That to me is lazy. That is just lazy. Yeah, the gears look, they, the, the gears are designed very well, but just the concept of it, it's like, really? So now we just got parts and everything just moving around. You, you guys couldn't think of any other type of, you know, thing. Now, now you got actual objects. To me, that that's that's just lazy. Um, there, another one is just a sword and a shield that, again, with eyes that just levitates. I'm like, that's lazy. That is lazy design concept. Uh, concept. And I can say that because I'm a I'm a designer. Damn it, <laughs> I can definitely say that. And you can say that too if you're a fan. But I, I, I know, I'm just taking it from an artistic aspect. It's like you could have really well just left that alone and just brought in the old uh, group of Pokemon that you liked before. I don't think fans would have been made a bit to all of it. I, I, I say that I say they should have just stopped trying too hard and make it uh, as far as making a new design and maybe just selling for maybe like five new Pokemon or even like a dozen new Pokemon at a time, maybe six on one game and six on the other. I just felt they stretched themselves too far, too thin in this in this case. And I don't think fans would have been the least bit mad if they would have just done the original 101 and just maybe just added maybe two or three more. You don't have to go overboard with that. You never, they never did. They never did. Fans would have still stuck on it like glue from that point. I do want to say the legendary Pokemon, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Zacian and Zamazenta. I, I love their design. I do love their design. Although they do look like something I've seen in an episode of Saint Seiya and Ronin Warriors. They fit very well to the series and the story mode at all. I do, I do like them at all, and the fact that you were able to get them and uh, you knew they would. I almost felt like they didn't at first because it, the story ended, and I'm like, "Holy crap! Wait, we're not getting them, or maybe we're just getting them on the aftermath of it." But they now have a story leading up to that, a really thorough story leading up to that that I appreciate. The two, the two characters with the head, sh with their hairstyle shaped like they're supposed to be millennial characters. Uh, with like really um, eccentric, you know, uh, you know, millennial characters with hairstyles that resemble the sword and the shield. The one with the sword looks really kind of iffy, and I'm waiting for memes to come out with that very soon. I'm, I'm positive that I'm going to see a meme with the sword haired guy because it looks kind of suspect, if you will. So, and in fact, especially when it wiggles back and forth there so um i'll just leave it at that overall after the unsettling disappointing and very mixed reviewed my little town hero that game freak released a couple months ago or a few months ago i found this game to be an extreme opposite to that game pokemon sword and shield basically told fans that game freak needs to go with what they are good with and just stick to your lane and don't go too far away from what made them that really got them to this point. Uh, whether this will go down as the greatest of them all, maybe that's up for debate. But because of their efforts in providing us with a grand experience like we never had before, I feel that they deserve some pra a lot of praise for this game. This may not be the game of the year for me, per se, but this, as far as Pokemon, this is one of my all-time favorites. I can definitely say, in my opinion, this is one of my all-time favorites. If it's not, if not, it's not, you know, unanimously voted as the best, it's got to go down as one of them at best. It wasn't the perfect game in the world. I did enjoy the hell out of it, but there were some things that I felt could have been better. But overall, or it could have been more too. But overall, 
it's enough. It's worth the investment for anybody to buy. I do recommend you get going out of your way to check it out, especially if you are a Pokemon game uh, fan. If you're not, this is still a great game to get. Even if you haven't played ever played a Pokemon game before, this will be the one to get definitely. If I give it any grade, it will be a B plus. So that's it for that, folks. That will do it for this edition of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extra Select Start. Thank you very much for following us for getting a chance to you know. I gotta say, speaking of following us, you can follow me on Instagram at Xavier underscore Josiah. Um, Instagram is doing some different things right now. Some things that I am for, but I know there's a hidden agenda in what they're doing. They're hiding the likes situation. I've been reading some for some people that it's really messing with their metrics in a sense. I'm seeing some things as well. I may, st- I'm still gonna post on instagram but not as much i might actually hold out because they're testing some they're testing some people to see how this new thing is going to go i'm all let me tell you this i'm all for the taking away likes situations people are talking about they should take away comments well guess what people you can control comments you can control whether you want people to comment on your post or not so that was already solved the like situation does create a certain mental imbalance in people that is creating a bit of you know mental issues and, me- and mental health issues with people and i agree it does however i personally don't think that instagram is doing it for all, all um it, 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 they're not doing it for altruistic reasons i believe that there's some money things involved in this and that's why they're really doing it i i know there's other people that have spoken about this as well um but again regardless it helps it's funny because the very algorithm that they created to create to to make this a competitive environment they're now trying to destroy but they're not also taking responsibility and admitting that they were the ones that made this if you guys understand the algorithm or if you know about the algorithm it's what people are talking about is they made the algorithm for instagram when i finally figured it out and learned about it it's like they made the they made social media this way so now they're trying to stop it now they're trying to you know they're trying to destroy the monster that they created here i don't know how well they're going to do it but until that i may not be posting on there as much so you can follow me on you can still follow me on instagram i may be doing it every once in a while but until at least up until they really finish with this testing but also uh, cause I, I don't know. I, I know there's going to be an algorithm change in this, so I'm going to hold off on this or at least until I learn some new things about it and more about what they're doing. Um, but also I am still going to be on, uh, the ACMG Facebook group. Uh, you can follow me there. If you're, if you have a legit profile page, if you're not afraid to be, to see your actual face or you're not afraid to be shown. I mean, I understand there's introverts out there, but in 2020 we need to be a better community we need to be in a more safe environment and i trust me when i tell you acmg is that safe environment for you to be able to enjoy and talk about and have fun meeting new people and talking about new things and that's that's one of my safe refuges from this so if you are a legit owner of a profile of five years or more where you interact with your friends and family and you actually see you actually doing stuff you actually you and not just pictures you know odd pictures or anything yeah definitely apply and and you know come on to uh our acmg facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash acmg1 you may also want to go on to talktimelive.com to listen to all of our episodes and including our exclusive interviews which most of them are on our exclusive page or you could go strictly to talktimelive.com forward slash exclusive you could go there and check those out as well i will constantly be updating all the new exclusive interviews that i will be having soon from there uh you can also listen to this show on itunes iHeartRadio, uh google play not google stadia google play or actually google podcast now it's not even google play anymore i just realized it's google podcast now so you go to google podcast check it out there um and stitcher uh, stitcher radio as well as popping you have all those different outlets to check out this show and keep supporting us as well uh next 
time on this show, I will be uh, reviewing my predictions on the Game Awards, so stay tuned for that. It'll be after the Thanksgiving week, so we will be on a week break for now from this point. And uh, from there, I think... I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do a show this Sunday. It depends. It really depends because, lo and behold, this Saturday, I will be at the House of Hardcore Wrestling Show, um, which is Tommy Dreamer's wrestling show on here in the 2300 Arena. I will be there mostly. I was originally going in there to meet up with my previous guest, Mike Herman, and, and the Retro Soft Studios crew to check out, to get my hands on check out. Um, Retromania Wrestling. So I'm, I am going to see them. I am going to see them down there. I'm going to get a chance to meet him in person. But also, I'm going to see a great show because a lot of the AEW guys are going to be at this show. I didn't realize this. Stan Hansen is going to be on this show. There's a ton of uh, some people from Impact. This is a loaded show that people are going to be in. So I think this is going to be good. I got my I got my front row seat. I'm ready to have a good time with that one. But I'm more or less ready. I'm more than ever ready to see that game and play that game i can't wait to get my hands on this game i'm so eager to check this out and get to meet the guys behind it as well so if you guys are coming i will be down there i'm not sure i'll maybe giving away some coasters that depends on what time i get there and how things go from there so stay tuned for that and much much more folks that will do it on behalf of myself this is dax xavier josiah saying learn to let go live life and love all things anime comics movies and games this is acmg presents talk time live i am out of here i don't talk to you on sunday have a great and safe thanksgiving people take care Music for this episode is provided by Game Chops. Check out these great chiptune tracks and more at music.gamechops.com.